Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. We have just done a full install of the Raptor style grill for the Ford Maverick on our long term test vehicle. And I got to tell you, it's a big job and it didn't come with instructions. I was kind of a big deal for such a big project, but we have a full unbox and install with detailed instructions coming right up. The aftermarket Raptor style grille with retro look Ford lettering across it is a popular customization available for a lot of Ford pickup trucks, complete with the trademark three amber LED lights across the top and wide horizontal inlets at the bottom. This product is available from various online outlets like eBay, Amazon and others. It's unbranded and really kind of on the down low as it's not an official Ford licensed product. This means that because it's not sanctioned by Ford, you often won't find the word Raptor or Ford in its product description. You'll see photos with the Ford letters fuzzed out and it's simply described as coming with letters. And oh, by the way, it happens to fit the Ford Maverick. They do come in a variety of configurations, mostly direct from China. Some have letters, some do not, others with wide LED light bars at the bottom or both. They retail in the low to mid $200 range and can be ordered from online outlets who ship from US warehouses, which gets shipping times faster. I ordered mine direct from a Chinese distributor for less than $200, but had to wait about six weeks for delivery. So the price is right, the look is good, but there are a few things you need to know before you tear your truck apart. This is a big job and it doesn't come with any instructions whatsoever. So let's get started with an unbox and an install and I'll walk you through it. I recommend budgeting at least a full day for this project, perhaps even a weekend as the entire front grille and bumper cover of your truck has to be removed, disassembled, then reassembled with the new grille then the whole assembly reinstalled. If you're an experienced bodywork professional, I would not plan on less than four to five hours, especially if you're charging a customer for your time. While it is a time-consuming multi-step process and laborious, it's something most people can accomplish even with moderate mechanical skills, so don't be too intimidated, just prepared. A list of required tools and recommended supplies is provided at the end of this text on our website. That link is below in the information section. Coming out of the box, mine was well packaged and the items all arrive safe from damage. The grill itself comes in three pieces. The wings need to be attached, unlike the Ford factory grill, which is all one piece. The letters come separate and need to be installed, which will require drilling holes in the grill, which are thankfully marked with guide holes at the back. Also included was a small and well done wiring harness for the LED lights, which has to be put together. There are also a collection of screws and washers to secure the wings and the letters, which in my case was not only incomplete, but I decided to replace all of it with a better selection of sizes. First, there were not enough of the number eight by three quarter inch sheet metal screws provided for all of the attachment points. Second, and most important, the length of the screws was too long to use without potentially coming through the front surface of the lettering in the grill. I watched another installed video on this product where the person experienced dimples and poke throughs on the face of their letters because of this. Third, the fender washers provided were simply too large to fit in some of the tight spots where they're needed. I went and purchased 24 number 8 by 5 8 inch sheet metal screws, shorter, so they can be snugged down tight without worrying about poke through. I also got 24 half inch fender washers which are a much better fit but even here were too large for use in two of the spots. Overall though I highly recommend you toss the original screws and replace them with shorter ones so that you don't damage your product. I drilled 1 8 inch holes for the lettering screws which allowed a little bit of play for alignment. After cleaning up the holes I started assembly. I snugged them down good but not too tight. You'll want to attach the two outboard wings before you do the F and the D letters because they actually lay on top of the wing to grill connection. Once all was done, I inspected to make sure everything was straight and proper to my liking. Laying it on its face over a towel to protect the finish, I set about assembling the wiring harness by first tightening the two LED lights that were loose, then connecting them up. I'm a stickler for a clean harness install, so I routed it through the grill's center bar gussets to ultimately string over to the side marker lamp and the lower bumper to splice in. I chose to route it to the driver's side, but if you're planning to use a side marker to splice into, you can send it to either side. You can power it however you want. Ultimately, where you string the wiring harness will depend on how you want to power it. 
Once secured pretty and neat with zip ties, I set it aside. There will be more assembly work for this structure later after you get your factory grill removed, so keep this workspace ready for more. As stated at the beginning, the entire face of the truck has to come off for this install. There is no just taking the grill off and replacing it, so park it in a comfortable work area and open the hood to get started. First remove the five 7mm hex screws at the top of the grill assembly, then the four 10mm hex screws set back at the top of the grill support bracket. Following that, you'll want to remove the two pop clips at either side of the radiator support, preferably with a body clip removal tool, cheap and easy to get at the auto parts store. You can use a screwdriver, but the tool is safer for your clips. Pulling the center pin first then allows the entire clip to come out easily and undamaged, and thus reusable. At the bottom of the bumper fascia, I then remove the eight T30 Torx bit bolts, which need to be removed to free it from the truck. Four are in the bumper itself, and four are set back in the lower splash shield. They all need to come out. The plastic wheel spats at either side are next, and each have three 7mm hex screws at the rear that must be removed, along with four at the bottom of the front. Once the screws are removed, there's a single plastic pop clip in the wheel well that attaches it to the fender liner that also must be removed. Next, you need to take out at least six of the body pop clips on each side of the felt front fender well liner, which allows enough of it to be pulled back to get your hands up behind the bumper. This is where using that body clip removal tool really makes it a breeze. Just watch the painted surfaces. Once these are all out, you're free to pull back the front wheel well liner. I found it very helpful to turn the front wheels to allow unhindered arm access up into this area in which to work. On the passenger side is a single electrical connector for the bumper wiring harness that powers your marker lights. You can disconnect it while the assembly is still hanging on your truck or after you pull it loose, which is what I did because it was just too hard to get my hands up in there and see what I was doing with the connector with it still in place. Moving forward, your goal here is to remove the three 10mm hex bolts on each side that attach the bumper assembly to the fenders. Luckily, it's not nearly as evil as it looks. I don't have a cordless power right angle ratchet wrench, but it would make this task much easier. I instead was plenty successful using a small socket, ratchet, and driver attachment to get these out in pretty short order without cut up hands. In spite of how it looks, there's plenty of room to work in here. The last item to detach are the plastic alignment clips on each side which hold the bumper in place. They have two small tabs which you can carefully press in either with a screwdriver or squeeze with pliers even with your fingers to release. Just be careful not to push them in too hard with a screwdriver as they can break. Once all of this is loose, you can begin gently pulling the top tabs of the grill support bracket away. There are two tabs holding it in place that a screwdriver can help with. Once these are both free, you can begin working the entire assembly loose. The key areas of care are the grill wings, which are attached to the headlights with small clips. They will pop loose with a bit of gentle handwork. While it's tempting to pry them loose with a screwdriver, don't. You can scratch or crack your lenses. Just take time and hand work it. I found success lifting up under the ends of the grill close to the wings. It will come loose. Once it breaks free, the entire assembly comes off and is surprisingly light. This is now the occasion I took to disconnect the wiring harness now that I could see it and how its clip mechanism worked. A small screwdriver used to put pressure on its lock tab allows it to come apart easily. Now it's time to take the whole thing to your work table with a towel or blanket over it to protect your paint because now you need to disassemble it. The grill is attached to the bumper cover with a number of one-way tabs that will need to be worked loose. But first, you need to remove a lower back panel that blocks the grill from coming apart from the bumper cover, which has four 7mm hex screws. Once those screws are out, just pull the panel loose from its alignment tabs and flip it over carefully out of the way. Separating the grill from the bumper cover takes a little bit of time and patience. The bumper cover tabs are a soft, flexible plastic which can gently be pried away from their catch on the grill with a screwdriver inserted between the mating surfaces. Just take care not to push the screwdriver more than a quarter to a half an inch into it as you can scratch the visible surface on the outside of the bumper cover if you go too far. Taking time by releasing each tab from one side to the other, gently work the grill away from the bumper cover. It does eventually come loose. Once you have the grill and bumper cover separated, you want to remove the plastic grill support bracket from your old grill to reuse it with your new grill. 
This requires the removal of 11, yes, 11 7 millimeter hex screws. Just as a side note, before I embarked on this, I did test the LED lights of the new grill at the 12 volt power post under the hood to make sure that they worked before bolting anything together again. I wouldn't want to discover it didn't work after all of the work of installing it. Placing your new grill on a nice soft work surface, you can go about installing the grill support panel at the back of it. Now you can see how my wiring harness routing makes some good sense as this panel hides and secures it neatly. In setting it together, I made sure that the wiring harness wasn't pinched in any way and went about carefully tightening down its 11 7mm screws. A lot of work for such a small piece, I think. Next up is carefully snapping it together with a bumper cover, which surprisingly was pretty straightforward. After making sure it was well seated and properly aligned, next was routing the wiring harness through the lower bumper back panel so it can align with the factory harness, and then reattach the panel to its clips and then its four 7mm hex screws. The last assembly process is splicing the LED wiring harness into the existing side marker light circuit. Obviously, if you're powering this thing another way, you would be skipping this entire part. As I stated earlier, it doesn't matter which side you go to, but I chose the driver's side as it was a simpler place to work without the main connector in the way, such as on the passenger side. I used splice connectors to connect the red positive LED harness wire to the factory harness green wire with an orange stripe. The black ground wire of the LED harness was connected to the black wire on the factory harness. I use quick clamp style splice connectors, but you can use whatever style you like working with best. After that, the final job is securing and making pretty the installation of the wiring harness in parallel alignment with the factory one with my little zip ties. Oh, I just love a neat wiring harness. Whether it's perfect or not, it will certainly not be seen hanging behind the grill from the front of the truck, completely hidden. Now, the reinstallation of the entire assembly begins. For the most part, it's all about repeating every step of disassembly in exact reverse. The first thing I did, however, was hang it in place at the top with the two alignment tabs and then plug it in and test it before I installed a single screw or clip. This is a good thing, as the first time it didn't light up, I had to redo one of my splices. I'm glad I found that boo, but before I spent an hour or two bolting the whole thing back up. You'll be wise to take this 30 second test as well. The rest of the job went in reverse of the disassembly, first starting with the bumper to fender connections to assure a good panel alignment, and then I followed with everything else from top to bottom. For me, the job took about 8 hours, including the initial assembly of the new grill. I do note, however, that these projects also take much longer when I'm stopping to set up cameras and lights for all of the various shots that you've watched. It would have been more like the 4-5 to five hours I spoke of earlier if I had just been doing the install by itself. The final product is one that I'm pretty happy with. I love the look, not so much because it's about being a Raptor wannabe, but because I like the retro style of the Ford lettering and it looks more rugged to go with some of the additional makeover modifications that are coming down the pike. The overall quality of the product is okay. The fit and alignment was perfect, but the plastic material doesn't seem as high of a quality of that of the factory grill, perhaps a bit more fragile. I was disappointed that the company provided incomplete and inadequate hardware, honestly hardware that you shouldn't even be using because it can damage your grill. The biggest thing that disappoints me about this product is the fact that for as complex an install and as complex as this product is, it didn't come with instructions. Zero, zip, nada. But alas, the price tag matches the experience, right? If this were a Ford sanctioned and licensed product available in their catalog or at a dealer, it would be 750 bucks or more. So I think for around 200 bucks, uh, it matches the experience. Now, we do have the full text of this install video on our website, along with all of the tools that are required, and along with a list of all the parts that I added to make it work. And the link for that is down below in the information section. And click on that, that'll take you to our website. And everything that I've just said right here is in text so that you can follow along and check that out. So thanks for watching. It was a long video for this. It's a, it was a big project. Now we do a lot of this stuff here at TDTV Garage. We've got our full Maverick playlist right there with a lot of products that we've installed, a lot of install unboxing, a lot of technical how-to test drives even. And we also have our subscription button right there so you can subscribe and see everything we do. Either way, stay tuned.